I'm Richard Semju. I'm the project coordinator for the Reproductive Health of Voucher uh, program here in uh, Mbarara uh, for southwestern Uganda. Um, I've been working on the voucher schemes uh, for now five years. We started the pilot in 2006 and we've been implementing uh, essentially two programs. We've had a STD or sexual transmitted disease uh, voucher uh, which was done in the pilot and then after a successful pilot um, the program was expanded to include a component on safe delivery basically focusing on safe motherhood. We've seen safe deliveries uh, because of the various interventions both in terms of access to antenatal care as well as safe delivery. Uh, the program covers 20 districts they have been extended now to about 26 districts, but uh, primarily all the districts of southwestern uh, corridor in Uganda have been benefiting, including uh, Rakai, um, uh, Viantonde, and Sembabwe, which are quite close to the central part of Uganda. The program aimed to uh, increase access to institutional deliveries and having uh, um, safe motherhood in principle of uh, having the full anental care package, the delivery in terms of normal delivery as well as uh, caesarean in case of uh, complications and the postnatal care uh, visits. We've uh, as of now reached about 50,000 uh, safe deliveries realized and uh, we were able to treat about 32,000 uh, STD cases uh, in this part of the country. Essentially, the, when the inception of the program uh, was uh, being uh, established, um, this part of the country had a thriving private sector uh, in terms of uh, hospitals, clinics. There were quite a number if you compare to other areas. Then, as well as the availability of the pharmaceutical um, companies, uh, proprietors who have uh, pharmacies that would aid provision of basic necessities like uh, consumables for the safe delivery program. Um, those were the key uh, main reason why we started the program here because it's also the OBA concept uh, calls for a well-established uh, and available private sector institutions um, such as hospitals and clinics here in this part of the country because of the transverse, um, the, 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 the road that connects to the Rwanda border is very active so it attracts a lot of private sector investment in the health sector and they also willing providers. There were available uh, health centers and proprietors of these health facilities who are willing to take on. You would not just convince them, but they were willing to participate and uh, be vibrant in uh, embracing the project. I think um, all of us target women. I think our women are poorer than the rest of these countries. I've not been in Bangladesh. But the, if I look at our, at our mothers here, they are more poorer. That's one unique uh, character. We have more low setting compared to all these places. Then um, the private sector here in Uganda is still growing. If I compare the private sector, all the you know, facilities in Kenya and here, uh, I think we have relatively lower uh, facilities in terms of um, levels. Um, the government and the, the private uh, providers kind of are coming together to work together where the government cannot provide these private providers bridge the gap. Uh, when I compare with Kenya, this is different. Uh, Bangladesh, I know government intervention is very strong with the private sector. Here, we've had misconceptions here and there um, where the private sector is sometimes doubted, they don't use qualified people, 
and so on. But uh, we, we are seeing change. For instance, um, um, here in Western Uganda, we've just had uh, an association from all the voucher service providers uh, institute into a forum for private Uganda Reproductive Health a Private Providers Association. That's a big step. We don't have it elsewhere. This is the first region that has seen this come up. We shared with the private provider, we said the best way to go forward is to have an association, to have a forum where you can advocate for reproductive health services. And this has come into being and we really congratulate them because that's one other aspect. Because OBA does not only uh, benefit the voucher clients, but also ensuring that the private sector grows, improves, and there's a change in the way government works with private providers. I'm very sure uh, a few years to come, government will be more trusting, will be trusting the private sector more uh, vigorously than it is now. The design of the STD voucher for the national guideline on STD management, the national policy, uh, which promotes uh, partner management, not sunny. Uh, and management. You know, an STD is a, 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 an infection. Uh, this is for two. There has to be someone who originates it. And the, the originator has a partner. So if you treat only one client, then you've not done anything. So what happened? Um, we instituted in that mechanism into the the design of the program and had two vouchers, one for the partner and one for the client. And this worked very well. At least we, we are sure that more than 50% partners came and utilized the services. Of course, being an, a, an STD, a sexual transmitted kind of infection that has stigma, we may have lost some clients or so some clients preferred to buy an extra voucher instead of using their partners and the, here in the part of the country and in uganda per se or in africa uh, sex is not a, a common uh, topic so sometimes people do it uh, prefer to to treat separately or independently and privately so however the behavior the health seeking behavior in, towards the std really uh, changed uh, from the national kind of you compared to the national trends where we saw more partners coming for treatment and the, the voucher also entitled the treatment for at least three visits uh, including the consultation and follow-up visits to clear uh, the infection. Providers, I would uh, active word is relative however um, in operation terms, there are some active providers. They would look at the mother, ensure that they get the services according to the package or even beyond the package defined by the program. Okay? So these are providers who are following the guidelines. They are providing the services. They are ensuring that the mothers benefit to the maximum. They follow up the clients. They are able to claim, okay? appropriately and regularly. These are good providers. I think we have about 70 to 75% of these category. We do have some providers that are uh, complacent. They are, they are moving on. They are once in a while lose clan, lose health workers and they don't mind. We have proprietors that are not following up what's happening in the clinics. Uh, if the proprietor is not a healthy worker, sometimes that is also another challenge. So uh, if you suggest improvements, they don't quickly uh, tend to the improvement you suggested. And uh, if they treat the clients, they don't claim as regular as they're supposed to be. However, that's our role to ensure that we motivate them, we encourage them, we follow up these providers to make sure that they actually do as per the contract says 
um, and in a way, um, in most cases you see them improve. But there are those who fail to, to comply. For example, if they have not recruited the, the midwives who are supposed to attend to these mothers, then the project has no choice but to terminate the contract. We do institute in other measures like warning them. When you find, we call out a, a quality assurance visit in this quarter, and we go another quarter, there's no improvement in the next three months, then that one calls for warning. So if they don't improve in the next other three months, that's now a, a period of six months, then we recommend termination, okay? So uh, that's how we treat them, and that's how we've got on business. We have mandate to visit these providers at least once in a quarter. At least in the three months, we must make a formal visit to these providers, either by the QA team or the project support team, you know, from here. And the, uh, even our teams, when they are there, they check on them. I've trained uh, in public health and mastered in public health uh, leadership. I've also trained in the social work, social administration. But my time uh, around for about eight years of working, I've been working with health related projects. I first worked in a, an HIV AIDS program, and uh, later I worked with a, a primary health care program, and now I came and worked in a productive health program. Actually, Safe Motherhood is my passion. I love it, and I. Uh, I really advocate to ensure that mothers in this country uh, have their lives saved and their newborns saved. I think when I say mother delivered a baby, I'm very happy. When I see uh, the midwives and doctors interested in the work and following the guidelines, I really feel good than when I go to a facility and there are new people, they are not interested, um, it disappoints me. Um, I'd love to see more programs that support women. I still advocate for vouchers, for reproductive health vouchers in the country or beyond because this is the way to go. The gap is still there. We still have a mortality high at 435. Uh, we still have total, the total fertility rate is still high, 6.7, 6.9, which is still high. The growth rate in this country only last year was 33 million. As we speak now, we are 34.5 million. In the next so many years, we shall be 100 million people. And the quality of life for uh, of the, the population goes down, down day by day because of a number of factors and because of the big population. I think all interventions in uh, reproductive health should galvanize to, 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 to ensure that more people, more mothers and women have better services, have their reproductive health rights uh, enjoyed. Uh, especially the rural setting where the services are very 